Greetings to everyone. This is D. Abhinaya, Assistant Professor, Department of English. Now, I am going to talk about a particular topic, drama from literary forms. And these are all the topics which I was covered in this PPT. The definition of literary forms, drama, and what is tragedy and comedy and tragic comedy. These are all the parts of drama and also one act play. And what is literary forms? Here is the definition. The form of a piece of writing is simply its structure, how it is constructed and organized. Literary forms are like to the roots of the literary family tree because it's a family tree. We consider literature and literary things as a family tree and the literary forms is the roots of the family tree of literature. Genres in turn are like the branches of the family tree. A genre is a specific style or category of writing. Genres make use, make use of the various literary forms as foundations from which to stretch out in many directions of expression. Forms and genres join with content to create the meaning of a piece of writing. Meaning is basically the writer's message to the reader. Writers choose various forms and genres to help them express their meaning. For instance, a poem about the tragedy of a civil war would set a very different message than a non-fiction history book. Four major literary forms, non-fiction prose, fiction prose, poetry and drama. These are, the, these are all the four major literary forms. A non-fiction prose, we are going to see about the defini uh, detailed um, definition of uh, these four literary forms, these four major literary forms. A non-fiction prose is a literature that is written in ordinary, non-metrical language and communicates facts or opinions about reality. Every time you read a science textbook or how how to article, you are reading non-fiction prose. Non-fiction meanings are usually pretty straightforward because the writer's primary purpose is to convey information or persuade readers. Next one, fiction prose. Fiction prose is also written in ordinary, non-metrical language, but it is the product of the writer's imagination. You have probably been reading novels and short stories for years. If so, you already know a lot about fiction prose. The meaning of fictional works can stretch all the way from obscure and difficult to clear and direct. Next one. Sorry, poetry, on the other hand, uses metrical language with lots of rhythm and rhyme to create word pictures. Poetry employs all kinds of wordplay, figurative language and imagery to send its messages, which are often rather obscure and need to be dug out with some effort on the part of the reader. And drama. Drama combines elements of prose and poetry into plays that are usually intended to be performed on stage. Drama joins monologues and dialogues by characters with stage directions and occasionally narrative sections that explain the action. Like poetry, drama can feature hidden meanings and message that take some work to decipher. And here is the clear definition of drama. A drama presents fiction or fact in a form that could be acted before an audience. It's a play. It is imitation by action and speech. A play has a plot, characters, atmosphere and conflict. In literature, a drama is the portrayal of fictional or non-fictional events through the performance of written dialogue, either prose or poetry. Dramas can be performed on stage, on film or the radio. Dramas are typically called plays and their creators are known as playwrights or dramatists. To make their plays dramatic, playwrights strive to 
progressively build the audience feelings of tension and anticipation as the story develops dramatic tension builds as the audience keep wondering what happens next and anticipating the outcomes of those events in a mystery for example drama um, dramatic tension builds throughout the plot until an ex- exciting or unanticipated climax is revealed drama dramatic tension is all about keeping the audience guessing in the ancient greek tragedy ancient greek tragedy oedipus the king will oedipus ever figure out that by killing his father and sleeping with his mother he had caused the plague that destroyed his city and what will he do about if he does in shakespeare's hamlet will prince hamlet ever avenge his father's death and get rid of his pesky ghost and visions of floating daggers by murdering the place antagonist gladius dramas depend heavily on spoken dialogue to keep the audience informed about the characters feelings personalities motivations and plans since the audience sees characters in a drama living out their experiences without any explanatory comments from the author playwrights often create dramatic tension by having their characters deliver soliloquies and asides there are four types of drama they are tragedy comedy tragic comedy and one act play tragedy tragedy deals with dark side of life tragedy usually ends in unhappiness for the central characters achilles sophocles and euripides composed tragedies tragedy should have an exposition a complication climax a denouement and a catastrophe catastrophe at the end Aristotle thought that tragedy is the noblest form of literature the evocation of pity and awe the achievement of catharsis or cleansing of our emotions is the effect of tragedy marlowe and shakespeare have often violated the law of laws of aristotle the spectacle of the noble character caught in the toils of circumstances raised the higher passion in the spectators types of tragedy the classical tragedy deals with the great legends of mythical age its chief characters are majestic heroes an ideal tragic pitch was maintained in the dialogues observance of three unities is followed romantic tragedy is concerned with the matters remote from ordinary life it is both idealistic and realistic it is never didactic plot of the romantic tragedy stretch over a long time it has subplots that is mixing up of tragic and comic elements classical tragedy is the imitation of a single action in which hero which a hero of high status falls from fortune to misfortune the fall must occur because of a tragic flaw or some error or shortcoming in an otherwise good protagonist and not by voice or depravity other type of uh, types of tragedies are horror and revenge tragedy of kit and webster heroic tragedy of dryden domestic tragedies of george lilio 20th century poetic drama has been revived in the place of W B Yeats, T S Eliot and Christopher Fry. Next one is comedy. So we are all know about the difference between tragedy and comedy. Tragedy is a sad ending and comedy is a happy ending. So comedy is direct opposite to 
tragedy. A comedy is a play of light and amusing character with a happy conclusion to the plot. With humorous characters and familiar plot through incidents ends in happiness. Comedy deals with the people of much less importance. The atmosphere of comedy is mirthful and light. Comedy shows the common errors of life. Comedy conveys its own moral. Common characteristics of comedy includes its use of language which ranges from vernacular speech to puns and old play, its use of taboo subjects and its use of incongruence and juxtaposition. Sometimes comedies rely on physical and crude, hum- crude humor. These are typically known as low comedy. And these are all the types of comedy. First one is block comedy or dark comedies. Next, comedy of humors. And next, comedy of manners. And then, romantic comedy. Black or dark comedies. Black or dark comedies are about topics that are distressing to people such as death, illness and other taboo topics. When people feel uncomfortable, laughing can relieve the tension and this type of comedy centers around this idea. You will find examples of dark comedy in movies like Death Becomes Her, Burn After Reading and The Death of Stalin. Comedy of Humors Based on the medieval era, belief that people are ruled by various humors that control their personalities and interactions. A comedy of humor is a character-based story. In this type of comedy, the characters have one or two dominant traits such as jealousy, greed or vanity that rule their interactions with each other. This is not a type of comedy you see often in modern literature and films but its influence is part of why there are so many great comedic characters. Comedy of Manners A comedy of manners pokes fun at the behaviors and lives of certain classes of people, especially upper class. You see many satires that are comedies of manners. The comedy of manners of the restoration period ridiculed the follies of the higher class people. Romantic Comedy Romantic comedy centers around the theme of love and it's usually has a happy ending. Two characters meet and begin a love affair but misunderstandings and other impediments get in the way. You will see this type of comedy in the work of Shakespeare. Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest is the play that's considered a romantic comedy. Next one, tragic comedy. In tragic comedy, tragic and comic elements are mingled harmoniously. This genre flourished during the closing year of Elizabethan period. Tragic comedy is a distinct form. It is tragic up to one point and completely comedy thereafter. Examples of tragic comedy are Shakespeare's Cymbeline, The Winter's Tale. The plot in the tragic comedy is a mixture of happiness and sorrow. Tragedy is a sad ending. Comedy is a happy ending. But tragic comedy is the mixing of happiness and sorrow. That is tragedy and also a comedy. As nouns, the difference between tragic comedy and tragedy is that Tragic comedy is a drama that combines elements of tragedy and comedy while tragedy is a drama or similar work in which the main character is brought to reign or otherwise suffers the extreme consequences of some tragic flaw or weakness of character. The blend of, uh, sorry, yes, the blend of sorrows Sufferings, humor, romance, forgiveness and reunion in the play confirms its label as a tragic comedy. 
There are different aspects of the tragic comedy in the play that include tragic elements, comic elements, romantic elements and a happy ending. Characters undergo transformation. Suddenly, villain turns into gentleman. The somber atmosphere is changed into mirthful. The general atmosphere of fantasy So Philip Sidney condemned tragic comedy calling it mongrel. Milton called it the poet's error of intermixing comic stuff with tragic sadness and gravity. Addison called it one of the most monstrous inventions that ever entered into a poet's thoughts. Dryden called it a more pleasant way of writing for the stage that was known to the ancients of our moderns. These are all the views given by these writers about tragic comedy. And next one is Onak play. Honak play is a play that has only one act as distinct from plays that occur over several acts. Honak plays may consist of one or more scenes. Honak play is only have only one act and it have uh, three or more scenes. But actually in drama maximum uh, plays have um, more acts and more scenes in those acts. But one act play is totally differ from the normal plays. One act play has a single plot. It's either comedy or pure tragedy. The action is confined to a single place and the number of character is limited. In the beginning, one act plays were used as a curtain riser before a full length play. A one act play is a play where all the action happens in one act with no breaks that is the scene is continuous and the setting most likely will not change. A drama on the other hand is only within the parameters of genre where by definition the play is dramatic. Aspects of one act play is the central sentiment, its crisp dialogues. The one act play imposes sev severe restrictions on the author. The author must use the dialogues carefully. The one act play can still be profound and poetic and subtle. One act plays are best suited for the exposition of comic themes. The outstanding modern one act plays are supported by amateur dramatic societies and school troupes. Some of the great one act plays are J.M. Sinch's Riders to the Sea, W.W. Jacobs, Monkey Spa, John Drinkwater's Storm, Gail Swarthy's The Little Man, J.B. Priestley's Mother's Day. Thank you.